Some lovely young lady contacted me and you can just imagine she looks exactly the same as Emily. She can't not. This is what she asks. How do you stop daydreaming? Well, I'd imagine that that's what she would, even though I've never actually seen that movie. But, you know, it's just got that classic Melbourne Bobby haircut. So, do you spend the rest of your life winding up a giant ball of string? That is what I imagine that you do. Uh, look, I've seen the Melbourne ad, I've probably seen Emily. That's what I'm saying. Daydreaming is, I think, a necessary part, this is a little proviso, of life. And I think that it's something that happens where your mind is able to just swim around with a bunch of different ideas that it's been thinking about, and then it combines to create something that didn't exist before. I'm just explaining to you what an invention is. That's what's happening there. But that is an integral part of inventions. You will go through it throughout all of, you know, the, the, the greats. Smart asses, those guys. Aristotle, Einstein, Leonardo da Vinci, they all had those little power naps throughout the day. And the reason that they had those is so that they could get all of their high concept ideas to form together. And then they could come up with all the great things that they came up with, such as Leonardo da Vinci coming up with the helicopter and other things. I think that's the only thing that anyone knows. Someone's gonna have read that book that's, here's why he's the greatest genius of all time. Yeah, 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 we get it, he's great. Are you Leonardo da Vinci? No, you're not. Stop living vicariously, it's pathetic. So, I do think that there is a really, really good part to daydreaming. Good. Keep doing that. I'm glad that you do because I don't think that most people do. I think most people sit there and say, Duh, well, the Avengers is daydreaming for me. Thor! Yeah! What a hammer! Well, he'd be handy round the house. <laughs> I think that's even probably too much daydreaming for them. They're in, caught in that little dream of somebody else's. The fact that you're daydreaming means that you are having dreams yourself. And the whole point of dreaming is that you are sitting there and that's what the subconscious does. Exactly what I said before. The subconscious sits there and tries to figure out the problems that you had in your day and that's why they turn into nightmares and dreams. And look, I don't really know if that's true or not. I've just read it in like a Jung book or some shit. So, <laughs> I think that that's what happens. I don't know, I've got a little dream journal that I used three years ago. I think that if you are going to be one of those people that wants to stop daydreaming, the problem that you are facing is that, this is pretty self-explanatory, you're doing it too much. And the way that you stop doing that is that you get acquainted with a little friend of mine called Focus. I think that I'm the exact opposite. I think, and everybody, this is gonna shock a lot of people that watch this channel, I think that I'm very focused. I'm not very vocal when I speak, but in my day-to-day -day life, I'm just like, this is the task I'm doing now. Okay, now it's time to sleep. <sighs> I just get lost in time because I'm so hyper-focused on what I'm doing, and I think it is because I understand the crux of the book, Focus, but not the way to spell the guy's name, Miss Halchenskiskoski. Anyway, whatever, he's Chechen or some shit. I'm sure he's got a really hot niece with that last name. And so the thing is that he was writing a book where he was saying that the point of focus, the way that you get into that zone where you just, that I'm on fire, you look up at the clock, uh, I'm 50, uh, which I swear that is my life. Outside of these videos, outside of podcasting, where I've kind of learned to be a little more extemporaneous and allow myself to kind of wander a little, I'm still nowhere near as good as it other people that just professionally do that, like Miss Love, for instance. But I am able to get into that mindset a little bit better than I was before. And it's purely because you kind of just learn that you can put on different hats and make your mind work in different ways. But the one that I think that I naturally move towards is focus. Now, focus occurs when you have a task that is a little bit outside the scope of what you can currently do. So, if you are currently doing a task like brushing your teeth, you've done it a million times before, and so, <laughs> I'm a chimp. What was I talking about again? Oh yeah, that's right, I wanna go on the swing. They, you, 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 you're brushing your teeth, and what happens is that because you've done it so many times, it's just automatic and so you don't think about it anymore. You're not focused. You're thinking about doing other things while you're brushing your teeth. That's how you start daydreaming. 
if you are doing something that you are focused on doing. So a really good example is computer games. Now, as you all know, my views on computer games are that I wish I had a second life where I didn't play second life because that looks like the shittest game of all time. I'm sure the chicks that watch this at the moment, that's it, I could deal with all of the gross sexual references, but this is a bridge too far. But I wish I had a game so I could play guy computer games. Pretty much just like, yeah, punching jumpies in the head. But I don't have the time. I don't have the time because obviously I'm running a business. And so every waking second of my life is just trying to be in the zone as long as possible. Computer games though, what they do is it's just level after level, in most computer games anyway, they just get progressively more difficult. So that was the problem that you always have with SimCity. It's mad building a city and then after a while, then what? I'm just gonna put a monster in there. Oh no, down street on fire. <laughs> anyway, and then you never play it again. Because there's no, there's a point where the challenge just, like you, you figure it out and so then you just get bored of it. That's pretty much what happens with all games, but the good games that keep you focused long enough, they just keep upping the challenges. I think that was the whole point of World of Warcraft, even though I've never played it. I think that it's just that you are constantly level upping to the point that it's just like Dragon Ball GT now, where <laughs> it's just, or whatever they are. You know how they're just up to Dragon <laughs> fuck. Is, is that the most recent one? The one with the blue hair? GT? But whatever. The one with the blue hair. You know now they're up to like level seven and somehow gold has been outshone by having blue hair? Because of how wild SJWs are. <laughs> 2016 joke, am I right? But the reason that they are in that, that that keeps happening is because you just, you, like, you know, you keep getting rewarded for it. Like it's just a little bit, the task that you were doing was a little bit out of your scope. So you just kept, say like it's a Super Mario basic one where you just keep jumping and then Donkey Kong keeps throwing down the barrels. Uh, and eventually you figure out how to get past all of those barrels and then you save the princess. And then you go to the next level and then he's throwing barrels a little bit faster. And then you figure that out. And so you go to the next one, he's throwing it a little bit faster. You go to the next one. That's what's keeping your focus. It's not unbelievably impossible. That's why something like reading a brief history of time for a numbnut like me, when I open up the book and then he's just been like, the quag port wormhole vortex noodle zorp. Noodle zorp? I'm pretty sure that that's jargon. He's just making up words. So I don't uh, pay attention to that. I, well, me personally, anyway, like I, I'm too stupid to understand astrophysics. I don't get it. So that just goes straight into the, look at me, I'm really smart because I have a bookshelf full of books. And then you just open that one up and oh, there you go. It's on page two. That's where I am for that. When it comes to these videos, I think what happened was you started off with perfecting one video and then after a while that became, you started moving more people. So then it became, oh, okay, now I've got to be doing a business as well as keep churning out content, but I also have to start managing people. So all of these new skills keep getting acquired, which is why it just keeps maintaining my focus because I'm constantly having to deal with new challenges that are just a little bit outside my scope. There is a really good saying, and I can't remember who said it, but they, somebody was saying, why don't you have a hundred million dollar business yet? And his response was because I am not there yet. I'm not capable of doing that yet. But that was his goal, he was moving towards it. And that's the whole thing that's about goals. You're just using the same mechanism the computer games use to keep you focused. It's just, can I get to that next little stage? That is why you're daydreaming. You are daydreaming because life is too easy for you. You're playing it on easy mode and so your mind is wandering in other places. Ideally, what you would be doing in a day is you'd be meditating a couple of days first off, but as I was saying before, boredom is a powerful tool. Boredom is a powerful tool if you allot it. It's kind of the same thing as when you've broken up with an ex and they tell you that you should just sit in a room by yourself and focus on how much you hate your ex for 20 minutes a day until you feel better. But just say that just between, I don't know, 11.40 and 12 p.m., that's all I'm gonna be doing. Focusing on how much I hate my ex. What a charming life. That's why boredom would be working in the same way. Like just if you have it for just a little bit, so you just, you, you're reducing the amount of daydreaming because like a lot of things that are happening in your brain, they're good, 
in certain environments. But the thing is that what you are trying to do constantly, the, the, the whole game in the 21st century is to condition your brain to be working to this current environment, which is obviously difficult because this environment is so much more complex. And, like, I'm looking outside right now. Think about how complex this environment is. There is a coals, and then above that is a bunch of apartment blocks, and above that is a bunch of gum trees. Every food item in the country, followed by, I don't know, 70,000 people from Hong Kong, followed by a bunch of gum trees with probably a couple of koalas in there. Mm, well, I mean, at least I'm alive. <laughs> That's today's society and that's today's environment. That's what you are navigating around. In that environment, it obviously helps, just like it has all throughout history. There's one thing that gets people ahead in life and that is focus. Focus gets people ahead in life. The way that you get focus, my pen. Well, I've got to master that trick, don't I? <laughs> Little reference. Uh, the way that you master that trick is by setting yourself little goals. So as I've always said, you've got to make big goals for your life, but then you have to break them down into smaller goals. And if you have smaller goals, you're going to be moving up to the next one. Just, okay, I'm here, but I just want to be getting here. And that's manageable. As long as in your mind, you know that it's manageable, you will focus on it. Now, small goals for me now is pretty much just, I've got three videos that I have to complete a week. And then people go, Duh. one of them in the middle suck. Shut up, you're getting three videos free of content, which is a great opportunity for me to plug my brand new Patreon that is exclusive for this channel. There you go, another opportunity to give me money. I don't think two was enough. And so all you have to do is just sign up and you will be getting another video like this that all those cheapskates won't get to see. But I'm also going to be giving out this advice pretty much because I just like doing it. And I like the fact that there are all of these people that, let's be honest, there's a lot of early onset balding guys. I mean, people are always saying that to me. No, 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 no. Mine's a widow's peak. That's just classic uh, uh, slav hair. It just goes, didish, didish, and it stays there, baby. Sorry, I'm not like you Anglo-Saxons. Sucks to be you at 25. But anyway, just because you're bold doesn't mean you can crush it in other areas of your life. And this channel is to prove that. This is for all you balding fucks out there. Get Make sure you sign up to Patreon so I can pay you out. And you give me money at the same time. Where else are you going to get that opportunity? Make sure you like this video and give me more questions. Because that was just lovely, Emily. Thank you.